Hello everybody, welcome to the second episode of Reaper Minis TV. Today we're going to start off with looking at some upcoming miniatures from Reaper. The first thing we'll take a look at is a box set. This is called Dungeon Horrors and it comes out in February. It contains six different miniatures with no duplicates. All but one require assembly. And if you're a D&D or Pathfinder player, you'll recognize a lot of these. They're staples of dungeon crawls. And for the DM, you'll find stuff from low level to high level to challenge the party with. Another upcoming box set is called the Dragon Men of Varanadar, and in this set you get six Dragon Men, Dragonborn, Dragonkin, whatever you want to call them, and most of them are fighter types and most require some kind of assembly, but you do get a couple of spell casting characters in here, and if you have a full party of nothing but Dragonborn, this would be a great set. And here's a look at several other upcoming miniatures from Reaper that you'll see over the next couple of months. With Warlord being one of my favorite games, it's time to start talking about it in earnest. And there's really two different kinds of articles or episode blocks that we'll do here with Warlord. One of them is going to deal with army building, and one of them is going to deal with playing the game. We're going to start off with army building now and get into playing the game and the actual rules a little later. I have two different Revan armies for Warlord, and I want to build two new armies. One that is good guy based or good aligned and one that is evil aligned. And we'll get into the specifics of which ones we're going to do in a few minutes. But first thing to talk about with Warlord are how you build your armies or what goes into your armies. Each army is going to be built of different blocks. And these building blocks are sort of going to be your units of guys or monsters or assassins running around or things like that. And these blocks, these basic building blocks, really fall into one of two different categories. They're either going to be a unit of troops, a group of soldiers, or they're going to be a solo model, a model that is just by itself. Now these two groups are really what you think they are. The groups of soldiers are going to be your guys that usually have a leader. That might be a sergeant, lieutenant, warlord. They might have some elites mixed in with the group, things like spellcasters, clerics, heroes, things like that. The single models are just that, single models that don't fit into a unit. These could be things like uh, large demons. They could be griffins. They could be dragons. They could be all sorts of different things. They could be assassins running around by themselves, killing people. Anything that doesn't fit into a normal group of soldiers for whatever reason is going to be a solo model. Now for me, when I'm building a warlord army, I like to start with the solo models first. Sort of like jumping to dessert before dinner, but for me that's what I like to do. Since warlord is more of a skirmish game, I like to focus on the solo models that are really going to be the focal point of my army. If you do it differently, that's fine. This is just how I build my armies. Now, for a thousand point army, which is a pretty good sized army in Warlord, I found that you're usually going to have two solo models and two groups or units of soldiers. Your mileage may vary on this. You may end up with more or less depending on what army you're playing, but that's usually what my experience is. The dwarves are going to be the first of the two new armies that I'm building, and they'll be the good aligned army. And when we start looking at the solitaire or solo models, the first thing we come across are two dwarves. Snorri Oathbreaker and Anasha Tomebreaker are the two, and Snorri is an assassin. Sounds a little bit like a lost dwarf from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, but he's a good model. He's got stealth ability, he's got some poison, assassin ability, he's got a good ranged attack, and Anasha Tomebreaker is a spellcaster. Nothing wrong with her, but I'm going to go ahead and pass on both of these just because I do want something that's really going to stand out in the army, something big and imposing on the battlefield, and I'm going to have plenty of other dwarves in the army anyway. So that leads me to 
four other entries. Out of the four things that we have to look at now, there's a small earth elemental, still pretty large, a griffin, a stone spirit, which is a really large earth elemental, and a dire bear. I'm going to go ahead and pass on the griffin right off the bat. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's an awesome model, has a ton of damage points, it's tough, it can fly, and a very good friend of mine, Rodney, uses one in his dwarf army, and I'm going to pass on it only because Rodney's already using one, and I want to do something a little different. I'm also going to pass on the small earth elemental. It only costs 87 points, so it's not even 10% of my whole budget, uh, but I'm going to pass on it just because I want something a little beefier in the army. I am going to go ahead and take the Stone Spirit. It costs 177 points. It's on a 50 millimeter base. It's a massive model. It has as many damage points as the Griffin. It can't fly, but it can burrow underground. It has damage reduction. It causes fear. Just an awesome model. I'm also going to take the Dire Bear. The Dire Bear costs 75 points, so it's cheaper than the Earth Elemental, the small one, but it has one more damage point, and it's just a really cool looking model. I'm going to be able to use it in my D&D games, and I'm going to end up going with the Dire Bear and the Stone Spirit as the two solos for my Dwarf Army. The Darkspawn are going to be my second army. That's going to be the evil aligned army that I'm building here. And the first thing to look at on the solo side are Ondine, a unique elf, She's a solitaire, she's an assassin, spy kind of, stealthy elf. And the uh, consideration right off the bat has to be the possibility of taking Rautheros, massive demon figure, as a solo. Now the only way you can take him as a solo is if you take the Witch Queen as your warlord and you give her a specific magic item. Now, I sort of have my heart set on taking a Beholder-type miniature, which is going to be Zeldorian, the Tyrant of Darkness, as my Warlord. So that kind of axes the Witch Queen right off the bat, which means it axes Rautheros as a Solitaire right off the bat. But it is a consideration, something to think about, very tempting because it's a massive model. I'm going to end up passing on Ondine for the same reason as I passed on the two dwarves earlier. I want the solo elements of this army to be something really big and imposing that stands out on the battlefield apart from everything else. And that's going to leave me with four pretty large monster, devil, aberration kind of miniatures to think about for the two I want to take for the Darkspawn army. There's a Devourer of Mashaf, there's a Fire Demon, a large monster called a Soul Tender, and Marilith. Now the Devourer of Mashaf is kind of a giant brain-looking thing with tentacles coming out of it, and it's got a nauseating ability, you think. It can regenerate. It's got an innate spell to it. Not a bad model, but I'm going to go ahead and pass for now because I just I want something a little different. The Soul Tender is the kind of half a guy looking giant thing, and it's not very expensive. It's only 54 points. It's also nauseating, and it has an innate spell, but I'm going to go with Maladorn, the Fire Demon, and Marilith. These are two really cool models. The Fire Demon's on a giant 50 millimeter base. It's got a bunch of damage points. It's got a bunch of special abilities. You can summon it or put it on the table to begin with. It's got a flame attack. It can frenzy. Just a really cool model, and I'll also get a lot of mileage out of it in my D&D games. Marilith, really the same thing. She's not as tough as Maladorn, but she has regeneration. It's a very good looking model, good six arm demon snake lady kind of model, and she'll also get a lot of use in my D&D games. Okay, so that's going to get us the two solo models for each of these armies, the Dwarves and the Darkspawn. And in the next episode, we'll start getting into buying the soldiers for each army, getting into talking about the warlords or leader models for each army. And then we'll also start talking about the actual rules of the game and how to play Warlord. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV, and I'll see you next time.